Welcome to Canvas Projects, a virtual program offering from the Pflugerville Public Library. I'm Meg Miller, an adult services librarian, here with another fun project geared to ages 12 and up for you to complete. Those who register through the library calendar can pick up their material supply kits, and for everyone else watching, we hope you give these techniques a try. This month's project is a foiled pour canvas. Let's start with a look at the supplies being provided. This month we used um, some brown paper bags, uh, because the um, hopefully you all saw this and kept this side up as you transported um, so that the poor paint didn't spill and start your project a little earlier than you anticipated. So inside the bag, um, you have a tray with all the supplies we're providing. Uh, we've got your pour paints. You have three smaller cups, one inside a bigger cup. Um, and so we've got the um, Pouring Masters paints, um, and the colors are a vintage, um, a bone white, so kind of an off white, a forest green that's a little bit bright as far as I'm concerned, and then the bigger size you have a lighter, and this is a celery green color. Um, because these have been sitting for a little while, before you actually do any pouring, you're going to want to shake them up to make sure the paints are all mixed. You see, I'm holding on to the lid that no paint comes flying out before I'm ready. Okay. Um, also, you're going to have one empty four ounce uh, cup, a wooden skewer, a uh, folded piece of cardstock, and inside you've got some uh, leaf foiling leaf. Uh, it is pretty sensitive, so I'm just going to slide that back in and set that aside for the second stage of our project. And then this month's canvas is actually like material canvas, but this is the canvas we'll be working on. And then um, just an aluminum tray that we're going to keep all of our paint in. So you see, I don't have my table covered because most of my project will be contained right here in the tray. This is, I will start off and say, this is a project that's going to take you multiple days because after this first step, you're going to want to walk away from your canvas. Um, and let your paint dry for at least 24 to 48 hours, uh, maybe a little longer um, is what I've got for our second stage today that we'll take a look at. Um, and so let's get right to it. The fun part. So this little cup here, the empty one, um, is to just put uh, open side down into your tray. Um, and then your canvas is going to fit right in there. It's going to fit any number of directions except for that one. So any of the flat sides to the side and that will keep your, your canvas up and you can pour your paint over it. Of pouring that I am going to do for the main piece is going to be a clean pour. So I'm going to open each of my paints and I'm going to pour them individually. Um, another technique you may have done before if you've uh, done any paint pouring with us is what's called a dirty pour. Um, so with that, I've got a little bit of leftovers from making my example. Um, with that, I'm just going to pour the paint all into one dish and then pour onto my material from there. Oh, this one might not want to open. Got too much paint on the lid. Oh, there we go. Suck a little bit of green in there. Get my red, a little bit of red. So you see, I'm just pouring right into the other colors. White, go back to more green. And I'm just going right in the center of the other colors. little bit of darker green and the last little bit of white so there's my dirty pour something like this could be poured over something and then pulled um, or you can just go ahead and pour I'm just using a piece of cardstock as an example to show and I'm slowly going to come through I could give the cup a little bit of a 
a movement to get kind of some mixing of the paint there. And then just come down to the ends. Got a little left. I'm going to come back up here to the top. And then I can just tilt my canvas. And so you see those are already very much kind of marbled together as they move through and spread on your canvas. And that would be a dirty pour. We've really got, oh, we had some movement. I could pick up the paper too, and just kind of move it around. Um, so that is one option for you. Um, however, since we provided the little wooden skewer, um, this other method that I'm gonna show for my wooden canvas um, will allow you to kind of have some control over the marbling details um, of your project. So again, I'm just going to give these a little bit of a shake. Open my lids. And I can already see maybe I should have covered my uh, work surface because I have gotten paint onto the table that I will have to clean up after I'm done recording. Okay, so um, really you have any me measure of creativity in how you pour your paint. Since I've got a lot of the um, lighter green, I'm going to kind of pour that first. And I think for this one, I'm going to go with some lines, some thicker lines here. Leaving a little bit left if I need some more. Come through as my next color. I'll put these all on the same side all right still have a little bit left in that one let's go with the light next Oop, that one poured pretty fast and a little on the outside here uh, i'm gonna come with the red i've got a few spots this will be my brighter pop of color. I really liked how these two greens kind of worked with each other. Coming in, coming in. And I can already see, maybe a little hard in the light, that I've got some little bubbles in there um, where the colors have popped through. And that is exactly what I want. I think that's going to look really awesome. So at this point, I could start moving with my skewer, pulling paint through to get a little bit of a marbled effect. I actually want to go ahead and lean and let my paint kind of move. Um, I don't mind getting paint on my hands, so I'm gonna go ahead and just pick up my canvas and start tilting it around so that the paint starts to go towards all the way to the edges. I wanna make sure it's all the way, and we can see, you can see how much space there is in between the colors of paint versus with that dirty pour where it was all very much already kind of close together and mixed just making sure my paint goes all the way off all of my edges come back down here i also the thicker of a layer of paint on your uh, canvas the longer it's going to take to dry so that's going to be something you're going to want to consider when you're getting ready to do the next step of adding the leaf to your design um, as to how long or how much your paint has a thickness. Oh, I really like how that's turning out. So I've got kind of a lot of there. I don't even want to add any more of my paint. I'm not even entirely sure I want to do any more marbling. Um, maybe just a little bit just kind of feather some of this red or this green into, into there. Mix those together. Let it move a little more that way and see how. There we go. All right. So at this stage, I've poured my paint. My canvas is completely covered. I'm back in my tray. I'm going to go ahead and um, let this set this aside, let it sit. 
um, as I said, for at least 24 to 48 hours. I've still got some paint left, um, which I could use on if you've got any little terracotta pots, um, as I did with this one. This was just a piece of cardstock, so the paper that your foiling came in um, can be used as well for um, adding, creating another design. Pardon me while I clean some of the paint off of my hands. Ahead and close these up for now. Um, you may want to clean off the rim of the little cup before you put your lids on, just so it doesn't stick together as my my earlier examples did. Okay, and so magic of video. I have a previous. Um, canvas that I did and you can see here I really went with the um, skewer and did a lot of marbling and really pulling through so up and down and then back across and got some of that really cool um, design so this one is ready for foiling uh, you can do this with your fingers um, you'll get a little bit of the foil on them if you happen to have one of the older um, Canvas Projects paint brushes or a larger brush with fairly soft bristles um, that you can use. If you've let your canvas dry a little too long um, and you're really not getting any of the foiling to stick to just kind of tacky paint, um, if you've got any glue, uh, uh, liquid glue or even a glue stick, um, probably you get a little bit more detailed coverage with something like a tacky glue, something that has a nozzle that we can really add the detail where we want. So these little pieces of cardstock are just closed with some um, tape. So I'm just going to open that. Oh, and I've already got a little bit of gold on my hands. Um, you have some gold and some silver. So again, for your uh, to your creativity, where you'd like your foiling to lay. So I'm just going to take this piece that's already attached to my finger. I'm just going to kind of try and see where my paint might still be a little bit tacky. And I can add some of this foiling. Let me get a little bit of this silver. This foil does love to stick to you. So, as I said, you're going to have it on your hands. So, I think perhaps. I did do where this has been drying for about four days. I started it before the holiday um, break, so I'm not really getting too much. So I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of glue and just the smallest amounts. And I'm going to go ahead and spread with my finger. Oh, there we go. And I'm not going to lay down the foiling just yet. I want this, while it is called tacky glue, I want this glue to get a, even a little bit more tacky um, so that some of the foil sticks, but not all of the foil I lay down. And dots a couple of places. And then I've still got glue on my fingers, so I can use that there. I need even less on this line. Bring all that right around. A little bit right here. this line in the center to be mostly gold. So I'm going to lay my gold foiling right on top of that. And you can tell this part isn't on the glue, so I'm going to peel that up and bring it right up to the top of the, where the rest of the glue is. Silver. Uh, packaging these kits, one of the things, this foil really reacts to air movement and so I would have to like 
hold my breath occasionally so that it wouldn't just blow away as I was trying to load them all into your little, um, into the kits. So again, I'm just grabbing foil, pulling it onto my canvas kind of lightly. places I got glue and again I'm gonna need a little bit of patience maybe I'm gonna step away and take the dog for a walk come to the library pick up some materials attend another program and kind of let this glue do what it needs to do dry a little bit side see I've got very shiny colorful fingers and now just kind of with my finger once I've allowed for it to dry which I have not very much on this example I'm just going to kind of brush away the the leafing that isn't adhering to the glue so that I'm really just leaving behind and again this is why you want to um, kind of let it sit for a little while so that that glue underneath really has time to dry or that the paint has time to dry further and that when you brush away excess foil you're not also brushing away um, paint that you might want really to be there so just gently leaving just small pieces of foil still attached It can blow some of it off as well. Just kind of tacking that down. And I really love, and once this one has some time to dry, it's going to be so much fun. You see how many more of the little cells are forming that show just the color and color. Paint pouring is a really fun project, and if you haven't had a chance to do it, um, we hope this is one that you take or um, where you go ahead and decide you'll give it a try. Um, again, if I had given this some extra time, I could use a very light brushing to pull off some of that excess foil. Just very lightly coming across to pull some of that off. And there we have kind of a shiny foiled canvas that shows little sparkle. We hope you enjoyed this month's Canvas project and we look forward to bringing you next month's. Thanks for watching!